Hey, I'm Liam. Hello. And, and I'm Luke. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Luke. Uh, first off, guys, congratulations on the show thus far. Thank uh, you. We were just both speaking to your lovely co-stars uh, about the standing ovation so far and your previews. How's all that going for you? How's the experience? And you must be delighted with the reaction so far. It's humbling. It's not the everyday sort of norm that you get something like that, but I think it's just testament to the story mm -hmm. and what this story means to so many people. And hopefully we're doing our part within that to try and, you know, tell it accurately and with heart and as sort of openly as possible. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a lovely thing. Yeah. It's the best start. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? When, yeah. when we actually think about it, like we're at the Dominion Theatre mm. in the Prince of Egypt, the musical, working with like Stephen Schwartz. Do you know what I mean? It's, for me, it's like to see that reaction every night that people love the show. Like, and I would use the word love because that's yeah. essentially what we feel at the end is just all encompassing love. Mm. Like you just see, and people like last night, even at stage door, I had um, a Jewish family that came up to me and were literally just blown away and just so happy that we're telling this story. And so when you get responses like that and the ethnic diversity at stage door, the demographic of that in the audience, it's not seen that often in the West End. And as being a minority, like, us as in the company is a high percentage. We're so proud of that. And it's represented not only on stage, but in the audience and then at stage door and within our team. So it's, it's a beautiful thing, like standing ovations. It means a lot to us. Yeah, I can imagine as well, in terms of, like you say, the, the impact that's having on, on communities and the mm -hmm. history that it's, it's steeped in. It must be so fulfilling that people are taking stuff away. And also young audiences are learning something from it that they might yeah. not have known before because, you know, 21st century is quite a visual medium now. And yes. while they might go back, not go back and read the Bible or whatever, this is their kind of entry point, if you like. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and I think that's what's so powerful is the fact that it has that impact. And like when you think of like you talk about like social media and everything, the response on there has been so positive. And we've seen that it, it can turn either way and not be beneficial for people recently, as we know. And I think that's one of the things I think we send that message. It's a very it's a kind show, even though you are challenged in so many ways. These two brothers relationships are torn. And I think that's what's so important. And we're telling not only the biblical side of the story, but we're also telling someone's heritage, culture, and the ancient Egyptian side. So it's, it's merged beautifully together. Yeah. yeah, the physical representation is, I guess, what this story needed, mm. isn't it? I mean, the, the film speaks for itself. And the fact that it's translated into a, I don't know how to sort of label it. It's a musical, but I always call it like a play. Yeah, well, it is, though. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because the storytelling is so true, and I don't think there's any compromise there. And they yeah. definitely don't shy away from any of the themes. No. It's just... Full. It's dark at times. <laughs> yeah. It's really dark at times. Yeah. And, and but it's also, that's what made DreamWorks different to Disney, was the fact that it was gritty. Yeah. The grain of the animation was completely different, how it was shot, like even the music was different. It, it sort of, and I think that's what's so beautiful about what Scott has created is the fact that he's kept that throughout this show. It's not a Disney musical mm -hmm. at all. Um, and I think that's what people should, no, like it's still a family show, but it keeps, it tells the story in a truthful, Yeah, storytelling, storytelling is like, at the forefront yeah. of our, it's like our yeah. mission is to, is to tell the story and not shy away from the themes and everything that sort of surrounds these epic sort of, epic. <laughs> it is, I can't, I can't put it any clearer. Yeah. It's just, yeah. And I'm touching on what you're saying about Scott, this it's brilliant working with, uh, an actor's director, someone yeah. that just sort of respects those things because it's it's important so it doesn't become sort of, I don't know, a lighter hearted. Yeah. And that's been in the process actually with the writers mm -hmm. as well. Like the writers have been very much like, how can we translate this so uh, English audience will understand things a lot more, be more relatable. And and we've we've literally been sort of collaborating it is a collab it is yeah. a collaboration all these cogs working together to try and sort of serve this one thing which is how it should be mm. there's no sort of hierarchy everyone has a voice everyone's just sort of just muddling in and getting the job done which it feels raw and it's lovely that going back to your first question like that that's sort of translating i hope yeah and audiences are seeing that and just seeing the heart from a full collective of people yeah 
because the film i mean the film itself was in the context of history quite groundbreaking because of the visuals and the way like you say the way that it was told at a time when disney were making their own their own movies whereas this was taking a real subject matter and treating it with with respect and telling it in the right way but also visually i mean it was so groundbreaking and you guys have translated that to the stage with all these amazing led screens and, and the stage itself what's it like being on that stage and taking all of that in because it, i can imagine it's quite a quite a you know quite a setting for you to be in mm. yeah. we can't it's this is not to discredit anything it's quite, we're not hiding behind big pyramids or it's quite a bare set mm. which the demand then to tell so i keep talking about the story but to, that is what it is we have to sort of tell it as clearly as possible through that but with a really sort of well-balanced, the atmosphere's there, but so much of my focus is out. I never really see what's going on yeah. on the LED screens. Yeah, we, we actually, um, sometimes we, we actually like, we wish we could sit and watch it because obviously we, we're pretty much, I mean, you're so busy, but I feel shattered. <laughs> so I don't know how he feels during the show, but literally we're in a lot of the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so we never really get to witness what is going on. But I actually sat down and spoke to Kevin uh, Depinay, who's the designer of the show. And we had a conversation and he was saying that they created this earth piece and the simplicity of it and just having the sky because they wanted the focus to solely be on the actors. And he said, and when we've designed things and we've tried things throughout the whole of previews and through rehearsal and tech process, he was like, we cut things because it was just, just distracting mm. and it was overshadowing the actors. And he was like, we want those effects to be there, but we never want them to be at the forefront to the point of where the story is lost. And I think, choice, yeah, yeah, and I think that that is beautiful because there's been other shows that I've seen, Lord of the Rings, which was a spectacle, but sometimes it was so big that you forgot what was going on and you, your focus was just still on the moment that happened five, 10 minutes ago and you lost some of the story. So I think what's beautiful about what they've created is the fact that they've kept the spectacle there and the effects and the LED screens and the like lighting and everything like that. And even the costumes, the designs of the costumes, but they've also kept it to the fact that, the, like you say, the play, the story is the most important character, essentially, of the show. Yeah, so it's it. refined everything because they could have, it's the Dominion, they could have had the big spectacle, but it makes it more intimate, doesn't yeah. it? I guess it does draw your eye in. Yeah. But we don't want to give too much away, but there is a lot of stuff that happens oh, yeah. that is epic yeah. uh, in the back one. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I guess as well, I mean, yeah. in, in, it's steeped in the history of these two, the, the story of these two brothers, which has yeah. been retold in various different ways over the course yeah. of history in, in films and, and books and everything else. But for you guys, I mean, what, what do you think is the kind of the core element about their relationship that makes it so touching and so moving um, that people respond to? Love. Yeah. I really do. I think like I th one of the things I will say, and he's obviously sat with me now, but the relationship that we have on stage is so the same off stage. I think Just we, translated yeah, through. like we are so close and this whole process, it's like, it truly is like we are brothers. Um, like we look out for one another. It'd be the smallest of things. Like here, no, when I'm feeling a bit like <laughs> anxiety because um, I do yeah. suffer with anxiety even that, and he, he just knows how to deal with that. And likewise with, with yeah, yourself I mean, as well. I, I, think, I think it's just like a mutual understanding yeah. that we're both complex beings. We've got this, the, the responsibility of yeah. something that's this big and has a lot of people, yeah. I don't know, invested in this thing. So you need, you need each other. Yeah. And it's and something if that's anyone's going to understand what the other one's going through, it is the other person opposite me, like it's yeah. Luke. And I think the thing is, just thinking now off the top of my head, What's so amazing about the story with uh, Ramesses and Moses is the journey that they go through on stage and that they literally are torn. You've got the privilege, they both start off with being privileged. And then one is brought up in a way, like my character is brought up in a way of like the duty that he's been told this is it. He also feels he has to constantly prove himself to his family, to the high priests. And so there is that pressure. And then when we then go into act two, obviously, there's a discovery, sorry, in Act One, which we find out that obviously Moses is a Hebrew and he's not actually my real brother. Um, and so that is shocking and soul destroying in the sense of because it goes against everything that I've been taught. But there is always still that love and that, no, I can sort this, I can fix this for you. And you then go into Act Two 
And it's like then Ramesses becomes the pharaoh that people expect him to be. Um, and he takes that ownership, but he always still holds hope for when his brother does return and it's a shock to him. So then there is the challenges and the battles and the constant complexity of the world that they sort of live in and what he's been told and that how it goes against the grain in him as a, in his body that he doesn't feel like he fits into the norm. And one of the most powerful lines I feel in the show is a line that Ramesses actually says. And he says, there's a way of honoring the past without being trapped by it. And I think that is so fitting in today's world that we don't have to constantly stick with tradition yeah. mm. just because we deemed that to be safe at that time. But things have moved, things have evolved, things are happening constantly. Like um, we're, we're constantly challenged, but it doesn't mean that what once worked works in the world that is created today. Mm. And I think that's fitting. And we're going through this journey as actors and our relationship on, on stage, but we're also going through an equal journey off stage together of having to tell this story, these, this rehearsal process, the tech process, the previews, and even just learning to understand how to go through this and the demands and the challenges it faces, just putting on this epic show. And I think that's what's quite fascinating is that on stage we're going through a journey, but equally to, we're going through that same journey off stage. Yeah. Yeah. It echoes, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a parallel there. Indeed. I just wanted to ask you about working with, with Stephen and also this amazing company. We obviously, we just spoke to the, to the ladies, but I can imagine being part of the company is great, but then obviously you're working with, with Stephen Schwartz and all these other amazing artists and, and film uh, song makers and everything else. That must be such a fulfilling experience that you can take on as you go past this, after this, you know? A lot of things for me tend to land when I've had space to digest it. And I just know that I'm gonna have a freak out moment later yeah. on. <laughs> right now, it's just sort of, it's weird just crossing it more, just like just saying, how's it going? You good? You still, yeah. you still alive? And there's so much to focus on that you just take it for granted, yeah. I guess. But it, I, it, yeah, it's him. It's mad. It is madness. I've worked it's with mad. Steve. This is my third time working with Steve. And so I did Wicked. And then I also did Working the Musical uh, with Steven. And so this is the, th the third sort of project together. But so we have a really good uh friendship like relationship and uh it it always surprises me in a way because i just look at him as stephen schwartz um and obviously that first time i was like oh my gosh it's stephen schwartz and then now it's like it, last night at stage door there was a young boy who's about 15 and uh he was just like how is it working with stephen and i was like oh it's amazing and i was explaining i was like oh actually i think he's still in the building he'll be coming out soon and he was like what <laughs> and he literally like melted <laughs> like it was, he was like, w when, when? Um, and I, I saw sort of dubbed Stephen in, in a way. I was like, yeah, he's in. He'll be out in like 15 minutes because I think they have to be kicked out soon. So I think he'll be out soon. So poor Stephen. <laughs> fans of people then were waiting for him. But it is, it's, it's amazing. But even someone like Philip, like the writer, like he's done some of the best Disney scripts. Like, we're working scripts. with Titans. And yeah. it is, it's... And Sean, like, Sean, uh, one thing I want to shout out to is the physical theatre and the choreography in this show is unbelievable. It's not been the seen. Heartbeat, it man. is the heartbeat. The, the ensemble in this show, are they are integral to telling the story massively. It's beautifully done. And Sean, like, has, like, danced with some of the greatest artists and choreographed some of the, with the greatest artists of all time, music artists. So to have his work go from there onto stage and different styles and how he sort of the process of how he discovered it, it, it it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. They're amazing, the whole creative team is phenomenal. You feel safe. Yeah. Which is everything you need at this point when you're trying to get the job done. Yeah. The support network surrounding everything is just like, yeah, yeah it's armor. Yeah. And this year, obviously, going now going into, you've been obviously having your previews and then you're going, going live, as they say, yeah. very, very soon. What are you hoping people that have bought tickets and the audiences take away from this? Because as you say, there's so many, so many themes, but even for, for your audiences, it's, mm. it's not just a spectacle, it's, a, it's kind of a history lesson as well. Yeah, I mean, are you yeah. hoping that that's, those are the kind of things that people take away from, from it? Yeah, I, th I think I am. I think I'm hoping people come and obviously one, escape and enjoy themselves. Essentially, that is what we do. We want people to come and, and hear a story and tell a story, but we also want to provoke emotions, challenge uh, opinions, and make people realize that just because you're thinking of one thing that you're used to, it doesn't mean that it fits all. 
And I think that's what we need to do nowadays in the sense of for everyone to come and watch a show, but to feel that they can relate to something. Because at the end of the day, it's a brother relationship, but it's also a father and a son, a mother and a son, husband and wife. Do you know what I mean? Like in-laws. You've got so many friendship relationships in this show, and that's relatable to everyone, no matter what walks of life you've had. But I think people will come away thinking that was epic, like thrilling, but beautifully done. And I think it's powerful in the message that it sends because it tells the story of these two brothers. But obviously we know the biblical side, but it, like I said before, it touches on the cultural side of things from the ancient Egyptian history. And I think that is good because that is someone's heritage. That is someone's story equally to the biblical side. They, they both weigh up powerfully together. Yeah. I want people to have the experience that I have. And um, I think you do as well, man. Yeah. At the end, because I don't know about you, it's the brightest show I've been a part of, yeah. likewise. But as soon as the yeah, you know the house lights come up at the end and you see the demographic of people yeah. in front of you, I hope people can just like look around and just see this is a room full of it's, this is the the world yeah. and a true representation of what it should be. And, and if we, everyone can just enjoy the thing together, no matter what your creed, your race, whatever, yeah. all of it, just just to come together and celebrate. Yeah. what it is to be human and love and compassion. I and and I, think, I, think that, I think, Luke, you're bang on because it is, that's one of the biggest joys for me. Uh, I grew up in a very poor city, a Coventry city. I wasn't given a lot of equal opportunities. And I have to put a shout out to Gary Wilmot because if it wasn't for Gary and, and Peter Polycarpu as actors, I actually wouldn't have ventured into this industry because I didn't see anyone representing me. Um, so to then now be working with Gary, it's like crazy because I followed his career. So to actually see that transcend in the sense of yeah. in the audience to see young people. We went for food the other day and instantly we had a young lad come up to us, a young ethnic lad, didn't we? And he was like, I'm so excited to see this. I don't normally go to the theatre, yeah. but I really want to see the Prince of Egypt. And it's nice to see people that look like me. Wow. Like that in it, so that's the biggest achievement. And I think we see that in the audience. And you see people, and it it is heartwarming. It's overwhelming, it, yeah. Isn't it? I think that's the big thing for us. Yeah. Thank can you. I, can I just ask, how long did it take to perfect the uh, heel tap at the end when you jump? That came one night. Time. Literally, just did it one I night. I think it was at the end of a tech day. We were just like, I don't know. We were just just ran and clicked. Just so then they were like, keep it. <laughs> the audience loved it. It's become a little button. On that. <laughs> yeah, no, there's even a gift. Someone's made a gift of it. Thank you for running. Every time I was there, it was like, woo. <laughs> trying to set like personal records. I know, we're like trying like, to get higher and higher and higher. Just, we're, like, just lift the earth as we run up. Taking a run up now, it was sort of just like a last sort of thing on the end, but now <laughs> it's like a sprint into it. It's like, let's get some air on this. You'll have one of those things where mum and dad's measure there. Oh, yeah, they measure where it is. <laughs> on, that. on the LED screen. LED screens, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!